Well, hello and welcome to Cycling Australia's coverage of the National Road Series. It's the Battle Recharge, formerly known as the Battle on the Border. It's a three-day tour in the Tweed Valley. I'm Scott McGrory, joined by professional cyclist Robbie Hucker, who has slipped into the commentary position. Have a bit of a chat about Battle Recharge as well. You've been a rider in this event and you know it's a great place to ride and a tough tour. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for having me, Scott. Um, it's certainly, a, it's a good tour, and like you say, it's a great part of the world. Mm, absolutely. Well, the, uh, we're on to stage two today, 130 kilometres for the men. We had the women race earlier this morning for their stage two. Now, we haven't got any live pitches just yet, so the Tweed Valley, as we saw yesterday, quite difficult to get the live pitches out through the mobile system. But uh, we uh, certainly have had some fantastic racing, interesting racing for sure. Let's have a look firstly at stage one from yesterday for the men and work out exactly where we are after the first day's racing before we get into stage two. So here's stage one from yesterday. So the town of Tyalgum in the Tweed Valley, that's Mount Warning in the distance. So 127 riders got under the way on stage one. It's also 130 kilometres. Similar course to today, slightly different run in towards the end. They go out towards uh, Mawulambar and then do the Stoker's Loop circuit five times. Same today, same start, and the first five laps of Stoker's is identical to as it was here on stage one. It's just the uh, run in towards the finish that is different. Actually, I'm just looking at this is stage two. This is the uh, the uh, recap from today's stage, stage two, there was a breakaway nice and early on. Um, so three riders right off the, as the flag came in, went on the attack. Uh, it didn't last that long. They're about uh, three or four k's up the road before they eventually got absorbed. Um, but uh, it was uh, Carl Michelin Beard was the uh, the first rider to go on the attack from Oliver's Real Food Racing. But the general classification after stage one, of course, Ryan Kavanagh won the stage. Uh, he was away with Aidan Tuvey. Did have Tom Robinson, a three-man group for a long time. Tom eventually got dropped and uh, went back into the main field. Raf Reinstein from Inform Make led home the uh, the chasing group, a very strong group of riders there, including number one Brendan Davids, who won the tour last year, his first race in Australia in, in the National Road Series for 2017. So Ryan Kavanagh in the leader's jersey, but he's registered here as an individual rider. So that's going to be the biggest challenge that he has today for stage two, of course, Robbie. Yeah, that's right. It was a super impressive ride by Kavanagh yesterday. Um, as Like you say, it was an individual, um, not to be expected, but you could probably expect that that was his only option really to, to win the stage and to go for the tour overall. So it's certainly a, a good outcome for him. Yeah, he did really well. Now, as, as I said, the uh, women have already raced this morning for their stage two. And Grace Brown went into stage two in the overall race lead. We can just show you the, uh, the finish of stage two. Quite an extraordinary ride it was by the South African Brittany Pettersen. She uh, was able to come away with a solo stage win. She attacked on the second lap of the two 44-kilometre loops and run by two minutes and six seconds on her own. So the South African that now lives in Adelaide, the girlfriend of last year's men's winner, Brendan Davids. So the two South Africans doing very well in the Tweed Valley. Kate McIlroy from Specialised led home the chasing group that had Jessica Pratt, Grace Brown and Emily Roper. So those four were just off the front of what was uh, left of the main field. But Grace Brown, after stage two, still in the overall race lead. So for Brittany Pedersen, she lost a lot of time on stage one. So she moved up of the classification a little bit till 11th, but didn't trouble Grace Brown out in front. Kate McElroy was um, in second place. Now, interesting is we saw Georgia um, Whitehouse, who was in second place after stage one, had a mechanical issue today she had to change her bike with a teammate but a teammate had different pedals so she borrowed her teammates shoes as well to match the pedals of her bike and unfortunately with all of that going on uh, she lost a bit of time today so she's plummeted down the overall classification so uh, disappointment there for White House. Yeah what a what a teammate I've never <laughs> heard that before but that's um, that's good teamwork. <laughs> yes yeah, certainly is certainly is so Grace Brown leading the way Ryan Kavanagh still in the overall race lead for the men but there's been plenty of attacks today let's have a look at how stage two for the men at the battle recharge has gone so far this morning Four, 
Well, I say this morning, but it did start uh, fairly late in the morning. They're into the afternoon now. Yesterday we saw it really heated up through the valley last uh, yesterday. And the riders were um, talking, they were quite unexpectedly hotter than they were thinking they were going to be. The guys uh, rolled out from Tyalgum, flag dropped, and um, sedate start for the riders. But uh, what's been controversial this morning is uh, that there was a nasty crash in the main field. The first break that got up the road, we had four riders eventually, uh, we'll show that in a moment, four riders um, going on the attack. And these are the first attacks here that were coming through. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a nasty crash, then they had to end up neutralising the race. So that was the story of the first part of the race after this is the first attack. These three riders then came back in, then it was these four. And once they got established, they neutralised the race because there was a big crash back in the main field. The defending champion, Brendan Davids, had a very nasty crash apparently, but he got back into the field. They let them go again. Always debatable this because these riders weren't in the break, uh, weren't in the crash. Why should they be neutralised? Because the guys have had a crash back in the main field. That's up to the commissaires how they want to do that, um, Robbie. It's not the first time it's happened. I think mean, no, it's happened to both of us. Yeah, that's right. You, you see it quite regularly now. Um, it's all. I think it's it's probably the right decision. Um, whether or not people like it or not, I think uh, is up for debate. But um, it's it's about right and safety, really. At the end of the day, isn't it? It is. It is. You can see the damage that had been done. Uh, yeah, plenty of the riders caught up in that crash, including, as I said, Brendan Davids. But the uh, four riders that went off the front that spent most of the time out there was uh, Rowan Diva from Oliver's Real Food Racing. He was second last year at the Bor Bor Classic, so a very tough race. Chris Powell was also from Nero KOM Financial. Liam Lawler, the Adelaide rider, youngster, 19-year-old from Van Dam Racing, powered by Butterfields. And Elliot Schultz, the young Queenslander that rides for the uh, Australian Cycling Academy squad. He's actually an under-19 rider riding for that particular team. They were the four guys that had a good gap. They were out there for um, quite a long time before uh, they eventually did get caught. And now we've got some live pictures. So those four riders came back, then there was a group of six that were established. They spent most of the day out in front, so that was the real main break of the day. It had Freeburg, Robinson, Andrews, Nickhead, Olden, Newbury and Calder. They've only just been caught in the last 20 kilometres, and we're now 27 kilometres to go, and this is the new group that has formed out in front. So we've got a new group of four riders, Connor Murtar, Kahadi from Indonesia, um, Schultz, and Reardon, the four riders that we have out in front now. So uh, gaps starting to come out, open up as well. One minute and 40 seconds is the group, is the, the gap back to the main field as the guys come back across the Tweed River and they start heading back towards Tayalgum. Two big hills to come right before the end of the stage, but a gap of 140, that's blown out really quickly, Robbie. It has, yeah, it's definitely gone out since the last updates we've had. Um, no. None of the big teams here represented. No one on GC. Um, Connor Murtagh on the front there, he's, a, he's a quite a strong rider. Um, so you'd expect to see that some of the, the bigger teams and the GC riders get back in the peloton, make their move later uh, on these last two final climbs, short, steep climbs by the look of on the stage profiles. Well, there's the Queenslander from the Gold Coast, Connor Reardon. Famous name of, from cycling on the Gold Coast, the Reardon family. It's Father Brad. So 1 minute 40, the message has been given. So 1 minute 40, inside uh, around 25 kilometres to go now. Elliot Schultz riding for the AC. He's here registered as an individual, enters as an individual, but he rides for the Continental Team ACA, Australian Cycling Academy. Connor Reardon, as we mentioned. He's here with AMR Renault Racing. Aman Kahadi from Indonesia and Connor Murtagh. So they are the four riders that are off the front. A minute 40, 25 kilometres to go. There's the big rider from Mobius Bridge Lane, Connor Murtagh on the front. A couple of years ago, had a nasty accident. Car accident, hit by a car, broken back. A lot of recovery to come back from that. Good to see him really back in the mix and riding strong here in the National Road Series. It's two stages in a row now, Robbie, to see uh, the Indonesian rider Aman Kahadi on the attack and being really aggressive. So he's not a flash in the pan. This guy's got some stuff. No, he's been really aggressive this tour, hasn't he? Obviously, he's not worried about the heat or what heat there is. Um, coming from Indonesia, it's quite warm there. So, um, no, he's been riding really well. Yeah, 
Young Connor Reardon riding for the AMR Renault Racing Team. There's a couple of uh, Bendagonians in there, as like yourself, Robbie. Sam Eddy from Chuka now down living in uh, in Bendigo. Also Nick Simpson, Julian Thompson. So a real central Victorian squad there with a uh, local Queenslander thrown in the mix. Yeah, that's right. I do quite a bit of training with those guys. Um, re really good bike riders, nice guys. Um, yeah, the, the, the Queenslander here up the road. Um, probably knows the roads quite well and uh, yeah not a bad ride. Oh look you definitely know these roads very well and in particular as they make their way back towards Tyalgum now after doing the five laps of the Stoker Loop then they follow the same finish as the women for stage two and this is where they're trying to get to so the same finish same start as well from, la um, from yesterday from stage one but they come in from a different direction and they go um, over the king of the mountain that uh, the women went up to start their stage yesterday. They came in this way and that's a really difficult finish. Two hills right before the end. The first of the two is where the king of the mountain point is and then they drop down through the valley, pop up the last little hill that doesn't have any points on it but at the top it's 2.5 kilometres to the bottom. Just a straight shot downhill into Tyalgum. So it's the uh, fantastic and the best launching pad if you've got anything left in the legs. Yeah that's right. On the, pro on the stage profiles it doesn't look like to be too much um, but after a tough day like we saw yesterday it was only a really small group coming to the finish um, but I think these, these last two climbs, obviously the last one in particular with only two and a half kilometres to go I think can be really decisive. Just on the outskirts of Mwollumbar here before they tuck back through the uh, Tweed Valley and head through Chillingham. And that's a spot that uh, no doubt Connor Reardon would know very well. The Chillingham Village Store is famous from all of the professionals and all the riders that ride around uh, the Gold Coast and the Tweed Valley area. They go through them, they do the big loop, they go up Springbrook over the climb, down the, uh, the goat track through the Nunnambar Valley, up over another climb into New South Wales from Queensland through the Tick Gates. And then they all drop down into uh, Ch Chillingham and stop at the, the uh, shop stop there and load up before they go back up to the Gold Coast. So Connor really would know these roads like the back of his hand for sure. Yeah, it's a big advantage, isn't it? It is definitely an advantage. You know, you know the, the harder parts of the course and where you can rest and recover um, and, and use that to your advantage against the other guys. So in the overall standings, it is still Ryan Kavanagh on the same time as Aidan Tuvi after stage one. And there were time bonuses on the stage, but Tuvi picked up a couple of the uh, the uh, intermediate sprints, three, two and one seconds for the intermediate sprints. Kavanagh got the six second bonus for winning the stage, but they've equal on points. Kavanagh is in the lead because he finished higher in the stage, of course. And the gap was one minute and four seconds back to Raf Raphael Freinstein from Inform Make. He sits in third on the overall classification. Nick White, from uh, Oliver's Real Food Racing at 105 in fourth place. Then it's Ryan Thomas, Brendan David, the defending champion, who we know had that nasty crash 14 k's in. So we're still waiting to see how he's feeling. And then Scott Bowden, Aman Kahadi at 107. He's now in this group here. So uh, he's the highest placed of the riders in this quartet. And there's all the uh, the Twitter handles, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, social media, to make sure you keep yourself up to date. So while we're watching it live now, it's fantastic. When it does cut out, you can jump on the Twitter feed. Uh, it's being updated as much as possible. The signal dropout has been quite significant, unfortunately, through the Tweed Valley. So there hasn't been as much of a Twitter feed as we would have all liked. Uh, but that's just the nature of the valley, unfortunately. So Kahadi from Indonesia sits eighth overall at 107, finds himself now in this group of four off the front, so doing a fantastic job. And he's coming down a little bit, one minute 20 now is the gap. Ben along, Swiss Wellness are chasing. They had Michael Freeberg in the group of six earlier, that's been absorbed, now this group's gone, and Aidan Tuvi of course is equal time with Ryan Kavanagh, but Kavanagh doesn't have a team, he's not going to be able to chase this group. So he's going to put it all on to Benelong Swiss Wellness. And if they come to the front, as we've seen when they do this in the past, it's going to be pretty tough for these four riders to stay away. Yeah, that's right. I would have thought uh, Benelong might have put someone in the breakaway or tried to make it a little bit more aggressive um, just so they didn't have to ride. Obviously, with, with Kavanagh not having any teammates, like you said, he, he's got no responsibility to, to chase or to, to control the race. Um, yeah, so it's, it's... And it looks like there's quite a bit of wind 
on the finish line there. So we don't know how it is out in, out in the hills, but um, that could certainly play a role in the race. Well, between the two, the final two hills leading towards the finish, there is a bit of a, an exposed valley, and then the final hill actually is fairly open as well. So the KOM hill, um, climb itself, that's fairly protected through the forest, narrow little road, but the final hill certainly does, um, um, doesn't have much foliage on it at all. So that may certainly play a factor once they get closer towards the finish, but it looks as if they're all working pretty well together. So in the under-23 classification, Tom Bolton has the lead in that, but Connor Reardon now, another youngster that's got himself in this break, that's putting that jersey in danger as well. So it's not just the overall race leader's jersey that's in danger, it's also the uh, young rider's jersey as well. So this is certainly a significant move from four very strong individuals. Too early to predict. Ben Long on the front of the main field. You'd expect this to come back now, but there's four very strong riders out here. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, if, if Ben Long on the front, it's for for a purpose um, to try and to, to try and bring these guys back. Um, we haven't seen a time gap in the last few kilometres, but with Kahadi, I think I've noticed a few times here he's starting to miss a few turns, and a, the impetus comes out of the break, and you don't you don't really want to carry carry anyone along that's just sitting along so um, I think that, that now that Benelong are riding I think you'll see a, a big decrease in the time gap well here for Benelong the defending champion Brenda Davids 25 year old from South Africa absolute sensation when he turned up here last year the first race in the National Road Series for him followed his girlfriend from South Africa to Australia Cameron Road the battle on the border or the battle recharge and blew the field apart on this particular stage to win by six minutes on his own. It was an extraordinary effort. He's joined by Scott Bowden, 23-year-old Tasmanian. Cam Bailey, another South Australian here as well. He's 27 now. Michael Freeberg, as we mentioned, from Western Australia. Tim Rowe, South Australian. Aidan Tuvi, who's the man they're trying to protect in the overall classification. And the speedster from Western Australia, the veteran of the team, 32-year-old Anthony Giacoppo. That's the squad that they've brought here. Ben Long, Swiss Wellness. And they really have been, as we said yesterday, and we could say it all the time, the dominant force in the National Road Series for the last decade. Yeah, they certainly have. Um, as, as, as much as we talk about them being the strongest team, I think a lot of other teams in the NRS now can, and can play off that and can use them. They've got the responsibility to chase breakaways and they, they need to control the race. Obviously, they're, they're looked upon to, to, to have the biggest influence in the race and they're expected mm. to win. Um, I think there's a lot of teams that can use that. Um, a lot of teams with fast sprinters and, and mm. things like that can really play off that and use that to their advantage. Mm. Well, of course, four stages for the battle recharge. So two road stages we saw yesterday and today. Then there's a individual time trial, only a short one over nine kilometres, and then the uh, criterium to wrap things up. So you look at some of the other teams and you would have wonder who are the fast time trialers because if it is all close on the overall classification that's pretty much the one that's going to be the decisive factor is that nine kilometer time trial we've seen joe cooper in the past riding for benelong swiss wellness smash everybody in the time trial he's not here now so is tuvi going to be okay against kavanagh against the clock we'll have to wait and see raf freinstein who came third on the stage yesterday who uh, led the best of the rest in the chase group home. Certainly a very fast sprinter running for Inform Make. Um, how's his time trialling ability? Would they be looking at him for uh, Inform? Yeah, obviously he's got to try as, as best he can. Nine kilometres, you can't, you, can't ex you shouldn't really lose too much time. Um, but one, one name that just jumps out at me there is Jordan Kirby. Um, I'm not sure how his, his form is, but, but over nine kilometres, he, he, he will certainly be one to watch. Absolutely. The uh, former world individual pursuit champion when it comes to racing against the clock, I think for stage honours, he would uh, certainly be in the mix. Well, four riders still away. Elliot Schultz, youngster from uh, ACA, the Australian Cycling Academy, Queenslander. He's an under-19, but he's registered with the... the uh, Continental team and now he's off the front of the National Road Series event stage two here at Battle Recharge So it just shows you the uh, potential of this youngster. He's only 18 and yet he's off the front with this group So great performance from Elliot Schultz, Connor Reardon from Gold Coast, also another youngster Joined by the Indonesian Aman Kahadi 
He was in the mix yesterday and in that chase group that was led home by Raf Freinstein. So certainly showing good form and backing that up again today. And then Connor Murta, the 25-year-old Victorian, riding for Mobius Bridge Lane. So they are the four riders. Last time gap we had was 1 minute and 20 seconds. And um, we're talking about Jordan Kirby. Kirby, you would on paper say definitely the favourite, of course, for the time troll, but he was in a world of pain yesterday. So I'm not sure if his form is absolutely spot on. He's certainly not in his world championship winning individual pursuit form, but you can't turn down, a, you can't sort of underestimate a time trial even when they're not in great road racing form they just seem to have this incredible ability to time trial well yeah that's right whether it be position or this their, their ability to suffer um i know joe cooper does that better than most um i've seen him do some pretty amazing things in time trials unfortunately joe's not at the battle of recharge uh this season or, or, this or, year. or fortunately for everybody else yeah. that he's not yeah it's <laughs> he's very such fortunate. a dominant force in the time trials and especially with the uh, the National Road Series events where it's been the using road bikes, not actual time trial bikes. He seems to be incredibly efficient time trialling on a normal road bike as well. So uh, yeah, very efficient, Joe Cooper. Not here, though, so we'll see a, a different winner of the individual time trial. As we head back towards uh, across the Tweed River, over the bridge, four riders still away. One minute and 35 seconds I'm seeing coming through. Now, I'm not sure what the roads... Have you been to Fiji? I haven't, no. I'm not sure what the roads are like in Fiji, and I'm not sure if Jordan Kirby took his bike and trained there, but he has just returned from Fiji, I'm being told. So that's perhaps why his form wasn't so great yesterday. He's been on the beach rather than on the bike. Yeah, so probably forget what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, he'll still do a good time trial. Yeah, that's yeah. right. If you're a World Individual Pursuit Champion um, former, then uh, and, of course, under-23 Australian time trial champion in the past as well. He really is very efficient when it comes to racing against the clock, regardless of how much time he's spent on the beach with sand between his toes. I'm sure you'll still do a good time trial. Yeah. Well, the pressure really is on back in the main field. It is still Benelong Swiss Wellness on the front. Tim Rowe apparently has been going back, talking to some of the other teams, trying to get them to contribute as well. Um, so, Andrew Christie Johnson, the director sportif for the Benelong Swiss Wellness team, he's told the boys, get on the front, let's bring this back. And of course, they're going to have to, aren't they? You know, they, they can't really expect Ryan Kavanagh, who's here as an individual in the leader's jersey, really to do too much. And this is perhaps where it really becomes a benefit for Ryan. He hasn't have to contribute, he hasn't got a team here. We thought he would be isolated. But uh, if they, that team, Benelong, don't put anybody up the front, um, and in the breakaway group, then they have to start chasing and do all the work. They're on the back foot now, which is really surprising for me because they've normally been so dominant in this situation. Yeah, that's right. They obviously, they have to chase for the for the GC for Tuvi, um, but they're chasing as well to to have a sprint for someone like Giacoppo or yeah, like they've got got a number. Yeah, Freeberg. Yep. Yep. Freeberg's shown that uh, you know, so the ex track rider, former world omnium champion certainly has a good finish on him you put that combination together freeberg and giacoppo the two west australians that'd be a perfect situation depending on who feels that they've got the better legs for the sprint but they have to get over those two hills towards the end so two hills back to back right before the finish the top the last the top of the last one um, is at 2.5 kilometers from the finish 15 kilometres to go now, stage two, battle recharge for the men, 15k to go, 1 minute and 30 is the gap to the four riders that do seem to be working pretty well together, maybe just the Indonesian um, Kahadi that's maybe starting to feel the efforts from stage one, where he uh, came in in that second group. He's in eighth place overall, the highest of the riders on GC in that group of four, and uh, certainly working well together. But they've got the hard hills to come, and that's the benefit of being having a strong team like Benelong Swiss Wellness. They're on the front working now, so Tuvi can just be sitting in the peloton, floating as much as you can be when they're going as hard as they can, while the four guys out in front are going as uh, absolutely digging deep. Then they hit these two hills at the end. So so much can change, and a gap of one minute thirty with two hills still to come could disappear like that. Yeah, that's right. I tell you, with um, with Benelong riding on the front now, the guy that's the, that's really getting the most out of this is uh, Ryan Kavanagh. Mm. If he can go into tomorrow's two stages on the same time, time trial in the morning and, and crit, mm. he's, uh, he still could be in with a shot to win this tour overall mm. as an individual, which would be amazing. Yeah, it certainly would be. Well, good luck to him. We're all like an underdog in Australia, don't we? But, um, yeah, look, it's hard to see how uh, Benelong Swiss Wellness 
um, wouldn't be able to come away with the win, but that uh, gives some confidence boost as well to uh, all the other riders to see that if you actually have the legs and you've got the ability and the nous, put yourself in the right situation. Defend by going on the attack, as what Ryan did yesterday. Um, so we'll see how he goes. Doesn't really have to gap 2v today. He just needs to stay with him and be in contention to go into the time trial tomorrow. So what's the background between 2v and Kavanagh against the clock? Do we have much information on who might be the better, who would be the favourite going into the TT? Yeah, I don't don't know, to be honest. Um, obviously, yesterday, uh, Ryan Kavanagh showed that he's, he's, in, he's got good form and uh, he can... He's obviously riding really strong at the moment, so and he's obviously backed it up well today. Um, so it should be a, a close battle. Well, this group of four, it was established by the Indonesian, so Aman Kahadi, the last lap of the quite hilly Stokers loop. He went on the attack, and it was pretty much a all guns blazing type of attack, and Conor Murtar was the only one that was able to go with him. The two other youngsters um, were able to come across in Connor Reardon and Elliot Schultz. So just showing the potential those two youngsters have. And now we've got these four, four riders out in front trying to hold off the might of the Benelong Swiss Wellness team. You can just hear the event commentator, Luke Lucas, in the background. The voice of Queensland Cycling does most of the commentary for all the local events up in that region. Northern New South Wales and uh, Queensland. I've got some interest now for uh, Kahadi from Indonesia. He really has shown something special, and if uh, he's the man that uh, has forced this move of four off the front, then uh, he certainly is showing some potential that uh, he may be a real force to be reckoned with. It'd be great to have an Indonesian. There's another country that there's no reason why there wouldn't be a fantastic cyclist, a potential future Tour de France rider coming from Indonesia. Imagine the recognition he would get if he was to get himself into a team um, and then perhaps into the World Tour and ride uh, the Tour de France. Yeah, that's right. They've obviously come a long way to, to race the Battle Recharge this year, so they've, mm -hmm. they're making the most of their, their efforts. Absolutely. So Grace Brown, though, she's leading the overall for the women, the Battle Recharge. Uh, came back from Europe last week. She was riding the La Course race by the Tour de France. Very hilly one-day race for the, the ladies. Um, Annemiek van Vluten, one of the best finishes we've seen. If you haven't seen that one, you've got to go back and check out La Course because it was an amazing finish from Annemiek van Vluten to get the win. And uh, Grace Brown was 21st on that particular race, and now she's leading the Battle Recharge. So 42 seconds for her going into the final day. Time trial and criterium still to come, but she's looking quite comfortable. She's a fantastic time trialer. She won two races, overall tours last year in the NRS. So uh, I expect Grace Brown to hold on to get the overall victory from the final stage. Kate uh, McElroy from New South Wales, uh, from uh, sorry New Zealand, in second place, and the young Queenslander Jessica Pratt in uh, third. So still plenty to play for there between second and third, and Emily Roper in fourth. Throw in uh, Lebedev as well, 52 seconds. So the time trial crucial to find out who's going to be second and third. But I think Grace Brown, with a day to go, has that one wrapped up. So that's the ladies. Cape Grace Brown, as expected. She's number one, come in with the number one uh, race cloth for the women. And she's certainly doing uh, doing that number proud by leading the uh, the tour overall with one day to go. But for the men, just uh, cut out, drop you out of, of the signal at the moment. They go through the valley, through Chillingham, towards the final two hills of the day. And as we saw with the women's race, they really started to struggle there with a the mobile signal. So uh, unfortunately, not getting uh, much of a signal coming through. Four riders off the front. The gap is around 1 minute 30, but it's been along Swiss Wellness that are on the front trying to close this one down at the main field. And Kavanagh could be the man to profit the most from this. He's entered as an individual. He hasn't have, doesn't have any teammates here and yet leading the tour, and he has another team doing all the chasing for him. Great situation to be in. Yeah, I'm loving it. It's, it makes it very interesting uh, viewing for us. Um, it's... It's pretty unlikely, but um, stranger things have happened. Mm. He led the National Road Series last year for uh, a fair amount of time. Um, didn't come away with the overall victory in the end, but uh, yeah, certainly has shown himself, so it's no surprise to see him up in the mix, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we, show, we said that yesterday on the show, um, when he does come to race, he, he comes with good form and mm. means business. He's not wasting time, and um, yeah, like yesterday, it was, was really good. Yep. 
Um, now, for anyone that uh, wasn't uh, tuning in yesterday, they don't, may not understand your background, but you, of course, were in the National Road Series. You rode for the Benelong team in its different names in the past, but you're here for a very interesting Japanese outfit now. Yeah, so the last, last two seasons I've been with what now is uh, the Benelong Swiss Wellness Cycling Team. Um, this year I'm with Team Yukio, a Japanese continental team, um, owned by uh, Formula former F1 driver, uh, Mr. Yukio Kadiyama. Um, so it's, yeah, no, no National Road Series for me this year, but um, just focus, focusing on the, the UCI Asian Tour. Um, so it's been a, been good, a good year for me this year so far, so um, hopefully keep that going later in the season. Yep. So here's obviously the uh, shots from the, the finish line. It's where they started uh, earlier today. The women went out uh, nice and early, 7.50 they started this morning. They get the, uh, the nice fresh breeze of the early morning before it heats up too much. Inside the 10 kilometres to go though, and this is the valley that they're racing through, the Tweed Valley, such a fantastic place. So just come inside 10 kilometres to go. The gap is now at 1 minute and 20. They still haven't got to those last two hills. So those four riders you're expecting them to slow down quite a bit and if they really keep the pace on behind that gap of 120 could close down very quickly with these two hills still to come yeah that's right it's been around a minute minute and a half for for quite a while now and with ben along on the front chasing hard there there's it's it's shown like yesterday it's it's a hard hard course um hard profile to to bring back any time and it's just a credit to those guys out in front working well together and they're they're keeping the, the majority of their lead well, I'm just hearing an update. There's a disastrous situation for Kahadi in the breakaway group, the highest of them in eighth overall. He's the man that went on the attack that forced this group off the front, and he's broken his chain. Absolutely disastrous for him. I wouldn't expect that team to have a spare bike ready for him either, so this could be the end for Kahadi, not just for the stage, but perhaps for the tour overall. Hopefully he can at least get to the, uh, to the end of the stage and, you know, by miracle, perhaps they can actually get a spare bike to him and he can come in with the main field. But uh, disastrous. He's shown so much just in his two days of racing here in Australia. Aman Kahadi, and uh, we're hearing that he has snapped his chain from that break over group of four. What a terrible situation to be in. Yeah, that's unfortunate, isn't it? And takes takes another rider out of the breakaway. Um, so well, perhaps the strongest, from what we understand. He may have been actually the strongest out there. So... Maybe too strong. <laughs> <He's pretty Yeah. laughs> yes, too strong. Snapping chains. He should be in the world tour already. So we are inside the 10 kilometres to go. So this is yesterday's stage, stage one. And this is the man that's in the lead. Yeah, got away early, coming into the second lap of the, the Stokers course, and was solid. Well, we Tom Robinson and Aidan Tuvey, some former teammates, so knew those guys pretty well. And we worked well together and opened the gap early and never blew out too big. This is what we were looking for earlier, We were always working well. And yeah, Tom, Tom fell off the back and then me and Aidan just continued on. And there was a group coming, but I don't think they... I'm not too sure what happened there, but it was about a minute, I think, at the end. So. Well, it was a uh, very strong group. Tom Robinson joined them yesterday, so three for a long time. Tom, unfortunately, on the run back towards Taalgum on the last couple of hills and Stoker's Loop got dropped. 28-year-old Tasmanian went back into the main field. And then Tuvi and Kavanagh soldiered on together. And they worked really well together. They uh, did a great job to make it all the way to the finish. Nice and strong group behind as well. And it wasn't a, we weren't sure if it was just a group that was chasing them down or... Um, whether it was a split, but it certainly was a split. The pressure was on behind, and uh, nine riders came in. We weren't, too, weren't going to be contributing to the chase, and I'd, I didn't really know of anyone else that was had the firepower to bring us back. So I was pretty confident we were going to stay away when we got to the last lap. But it was just about sort of maximising the gap to, to the pillow. Yeah, but it was hard yak up. Yeah, it was hard yak and it got really hot as well in the afternoon and Ryan said that after the finish that it, he was really surprised by how hot it was and you know for anyone that uh, he's a Queenslander but uh, for anyone that uh, has come from the southern states yeah they were really struggling towards the end of uh, the 130 kilometre stage one. We know that stage two now for the men they're in that dead zone around the back of Tyalgum just over the last hill 
and there's not much reception around that area so we've lost our signal but they are inside the last 10 kilometres. The group of four has gone down to three with Kahadi from Indonesia snapping his chain. He was the man that started the attack. He forced the pace um, as they hit the hills coming out of Stoker's Loop and those uh, now it's three riders out in front and the peloton being led by Benelong Swiss Wellness and we'd expect a bit of fireworks on these last two hills and unfortunately we may not get to see it. Hopefully we'll get a signal at some point but um, yeah, three riders still trying to hold off that chasing peloton. Yeah, who's your pick, Scott? Look, I think I think those guys will come back. I think when they get onto these hills, you, you'll have your big guns really just launch on these last couple of climbs. Um, I'm not going to give you a pick, I don't know. I'll, I'll say Freinstein, Raf Freinstein from Inform, Mac. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Um, yeah, like you say, if they, they, they probably need that time gap they have now coming into those last final climbs. If, if they hit the bottom with only a minute, I can't see them surviving. Um, but they're working well out front, so who knows? Look, the question for, for riders like Brendan David, so the defending champion, he put in an incredible performance to win solo last year by six minutes, but he was involved with that crash where they neutralised the race after 14 kilometres. So if he's not feeling too good, he may not want to go on the attack. They may not want to go on the attack. It's all about really protecting their rider, Aidan Tuvi. Um, he's got a one-minute lead over Raf Reinstein, so I imagine they want to try and make sure Tuvi holds on to that before the time trial, and then maybe it'll be a head-to-head -head between Kavanagh and Tuvi on stage three in that TT. Um, Freinstein himself, he's the German hill climb champion, so that was last year, 2017, he won the German hill, tri hill climb championship, so he can go uphill well. We know he's a fast sprinter, we've seen him win criteriums in the National Road Series, but he can still get up a hill okay, and these aren't long climbs, these are more punchy type of things. Yeah, that's right, more explosive, um, yeah, it's, it's, it definitely suits him, this type of finish, get rid of the, the, the faster sprinters that someone like uh, Gia Coppo that, he, that might beat him in a sprint, if he can drop him on the final climb, that's perfect for Inform Make. Well, Anthony, he can get over a hill too, though, honey. The smaller ones like this, so he might be able to get in there. So, uh, look, you can also make sure you jump on Twitter as well. And, and for your Facebook notifications, especially going into the final day, make sure you check your notifications to see when we are going live with the streaming. The time trial, we should be able to have great coverage throughout the time trial. Uh, Criterion, we're still not too sure about. Hopefully, we'll have great coverage for that as well. So, the final day of racing for the Battle Recharge tomorrow. We should have some great coverage, so check your Facebook notifications to find out exactly when we're going live for both the final stages of the men and the women. And we're on stage two for the moment of the men. We had the women finish this morning. And another South African, another import coming to our National Road Series. We've got the New Zealanders always seem to come across and do so well. Um, it seems like the ones that want to travel, they want to do it because they know they're good and so many of the New Zealanders have come over and been really strong and dominant. Yeah, the New Zealanders, like you say, they're, they're, they're all that similar type of rider, just strong, um, obviously coming from, from New Zealand. Um, they don't have a lot of racing there, I don't think, so, yeah, it's, it's not far for them to travel, and um, it's, it's good for the NRS as well. It, it really gives that international feel, and um, like you say, with now with a couple of South Africans as well, it's, I think it's good for the NRS to get a bit of... Um, Absolutely. A bit of international flavour. It's, uh, it's really been a bit of a trans-Tasman thing when you throw in someone from South Africa. A couple of the Germans as well with Raf Reinstein. So um, throw in a couple of Tasmanians. Then we've got some real true internationals in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, I think it's fantastic for it. Now, we hear they, they uh, have gone over the top of the King of the Mountains climb, which means they'll be dropping down into the valley before the final pinch up over the last hill of the day. There's no KOM points for the final hill but they have gone over the actual KOM. The gap is at 40 seconds. Uh, Connor Murtar has gone on the KOM, so Connor Murtar is on the attack. Oliver's Real Food Racing have come up to join Benelong Swiss Wellness to chase things down, and the gap is starting to really come in. One more hill to go. We mentioned Freeburg, we mentioned Diacopo. They were both dropped. So the two riders that could really sprint for Benelong Swiss Wellness, they have been popped on the KOM. So it looks like they'll be looking for uh, Tuvi as they go towards the finish. Nick White is still in the mix. So Nick White from Oliver's Real Food Racing. His team's gone to the front to chase. He was second in the sprint for third from that chase group yesterday. Just pipped by Raf Reinstein. So if Nick White can get over this last hill, maybe it's Oliver's that can go for stage win. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, they're, they're contributing to the chase now. So they must have some confidence in Nick. Um, been along missing their two two sprinters coming into the the base of the or the, onto the the final climb um whether or not they knew that they they might not get over it or not um 
now with only one card to play with Tuvi, um, it certainly makes things a little bit more interesting. Well, Connor Murtagh has gone solo over that KOM. So Connor Murtagh from Mobius Bridge Lane. He's out in front, but only about 150 metres off the front. So well, he's got one more hill to get over. The two sprinters, Freeberg and Giacoppo from Benelong Swiss Wellness, they may have been the guys doing the driving because it's really about Tuvi trying to win the tour overall, not so much the individual stage today. But uh, those two sprinters from uh, Benelong have been dropped. Nick White from Oliver's, who was sprinting fast yesterday, also from Inform Make. Raf Freinstein, they're still in the mix. So a couple of fast guys still there. Yeah, that's right. And your, your tip's still, still in the mix. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Yeah. I'm not a betting man, though. I haven't put any money on it, so it doesn't really matter uh, unless I put some coin down. But uh, Raf Reinstein, Inform Make, third on the stage yesterday, but a minute behind the two riders out in front, Kavanagh and Tuvi. Both those still right there at the pointy end of the race as well. So one more hill to come, and they're at five kilometres to go. 2.5 kilometres is the top of the hill, and then she's straight down into, uh, into the finish very fast. Yeah, yep, yep. I'd, I'd predict a, a small group going over the top of the climb um hopefully maybe one of the one or two fast guys might be able to, to get back on in the descent and um with a slight slight uphill finish um you saw yesterday with the the, the lead group second group coming in uh with nick white and raf reinstein um mm -hmm. they they should be able to go over the climb i think yeah yeah we'll see so we'll look we're inside the final five kilometers just one more little hill to go. Conor Murtagh picked up the uh, the last of the King of the Mountains. And there were two hills right towards the end. Um, the King of the Mountain was the first of them. Then it's this last little pinch they have to get over, which I think is harder. The actual second hill is harder and steeper than the actual King of the Mountain itself. But it's a perfect launching pad if you've got the legs to really just uh, whack everyone and go straight over the top. 2.5k from the top of the hill to the finish line here in uh, Tayalgum and uh, certainly see um, how they go. Four, 40 riders left in the peloton, we're told, so it really has been whittled down. There are 125 riders on the start, and there's only 40 riders left in that chase behind Conor Murtagh out in front. 30 seconds, the gap now. Inside three k's to go, and the gap down to 30 seconds. So Conor Murtagh might have the chance. We're talking about the riders behind, like Freinstein's and, and White, that might be able to win the sprint. But maybe Conor Murtagh can hold on. He just needs probably only 10 seconds over the top. If you can have 10 seconds, 2.5k to go, it's a done deal, downhill. Yeah, he's certainly the strongest in the breakaway. And uh, I know he's been, he's had a f good run in uh, the races in uh, Victoria the last last few weeks. So his form's good um, and still gone over that the com. And the, the final climb as well, solo. That's a pretty good effort. Only a couple of kilometres to go. Conor Murtagh out in front. The two riders that he was with, which is uh, Schmidt and um, Reardon, were just behind. They hadn't been caught just yet. And last update, they had not been caught, but the peloton closing fast. 35 seconds or so is the lead. Conor Murtagh off the front with one more hill to go. And then those fast couple of kilometres down into the finish. In for make for Raphael Feinstein, doing what they can. Oliver's Real Food Racing for Nick White. And then Aidan Tuvey's teammates from Benelong Swiss Wellness trying to bring the guys back into the mix. Won't change anything for the overall classification now because that second group was at 1 minute and 4 seconds in the overall classification behind Kavanagh and Tuvey. So that should remain as it is. Kavanagh and Tuvey should still be the top two after this stage. But uh, then we'll all be to play played for on the uh, the time trial and the uh, criterium the final stage Freinstein's has gone on the attack as well so he's still coming up that last hill before the run into the finish so Raf Freinstein's has gone on the attack Nick White from Oliver's Real Food Racing he's following glued to the wheel of Freinstein's that was third and fourth in the stage yesterday behind the breakaway guys So any moment now, someone's going to pop around the corner. Will it be Conor Murtagh? Has he been able to hold on and defend off that chasing peloton? Big attacks coming from Raf Reinstein's from Inform Make and Nick White from Ola's Real Food Racing. The strongest team in the race is Benelong Swiss Wellness, but they've been putting all of their energy into defending Aidan Tuvey, who sits on equal time with Ryan Kavanagh. Kavanagh's in the race leader's jersey, though. 
big day out for those boys yesterday. You know, you've got to wonder what's left in the legs. You know, Kavanaugh, we haven't heard. We've heard that he's still in the mix. He's obviously riding strong. He's so strong yesterday. But uh, it's always the danger, isn't it? You put in a big effort like that, that you just explode the next day. Yeah, it's definitely, it leaves yourself open um, for the next day. Um, obviously, to do something like that, your, your conditions obviously is pretty good. Um, it was definitely a hard, hard type of course yesterday. Like, you can't, you can't ride something like that off the front the whole day um, in, bad, in bad condition. So um, I think they should be okay. Um, yeah, we're waiting to see. Well, another one of the Benelong boys has gone on the attack as well. Cameron Bailey behind has also attacked the uh, chasing peloton. So trying to leave the favourites behind. Feinstein's attacked. White's gone with him. Bailey's gone over the top. Murtar's still out in front trying to hold on. Reardon and Schultz were still in the mix. Have they been caught? I assume they have been by now, but we don't know. Here comes the lead car. So now we get to see lead vehicles coming through. Only a few hundred metres to go now. Connor Murtar was out in front. We haven't heard if he'd been caught or not. The 25-year-old from Victoria, Mobius Bridge Lane. Look for the light blue colours, see if they're coming around the corner. Still more vehicles coming through. Just to build the anxiety a little bit more. Photographers coming through on the back of the motorbikes. Last update was a 30-second lead for Connor Murtar, but all the attacks were coming from the main field. Ryan Kavanagh, Aidan Tuvey, tied on time. Kavanagh in the race leader's jersey after stage one. Freinstein sitting third place at 104. Nick White at 105, just behind him in fourth. Is it Schultz in front? Red and chasing in second place. They're going to find it out. Well, here we go, right around the corner. Chase to Schultz. And it's Schultz. Schultz has come from nowhere. Well, hard to pick up the riders as they come through. We can see there's been a real scrambling. So we were expecting it to split up as they came through, and it certainly has definitely split to pieces on the uh, final hill and then the, uh, the descent, the run into the finish. Just struggling to pick up uh, who the rider was that came through to actually win the stage. And there's Conor Murtar coming through, so... The rider that was off the front before the uh, the end comes through to pick up the second. And we'll give you some confirmation of the stage placings as soon as they come through. And we get some official results. You can see how much damage was done though, Robbie. You know, last lead in, just two hills back to back. Yeah, it certainly didn't look like too much on the profile, but yeah, as you as you say, like they're coming in now in ones and twos, which which, which suggests that it was harder than it looked. Definitely a couple of nasty couple of hills there. Well, Ryan Kavanagh came in as the leader. The overall classification is he and Tuvi both a minute ahead of the next best riders in Raf Reinstein. Aman Kahadi, the Indonesian, was the rider that broke his chain shortly before the last King of the Mountain climb. So hopefully he's been able to get a spare bike and get himself going again. He was in eighth place overall. Great to see one of the riders from Indonesia doing so well and being in the mix. So this is the uh, virtual standings that we the last one we saw of the general classification, which still keeps Kavanagh and Tuvi, as we expected, tied on time. So they were right there in the mix in that lead group and haven't lost out in terms of the overall classification. Raf Reinstein in the mix there still. Just waiting for confirmation on the actual stage result, though.
when he comes around. It's probably not appropriate for children to see, but he is ripped up. He's been on the ground, jumped back on his bike, has been pushed on into the race, and has continued for the rest of the day. He's up by young Davids. On the approach to the final hill, the peloton had been whittled down from 125 to 40. And the big chase behind certainly uh, blown to pieces on that final hill before the run into the finish. So no change in terms of the overall classification. Ryan Kavanagh and Aidan Tuvey still tied. It's going to come down to that time trial to sort things out. And then there's still time bonuses up for grabs in the criterium as well. Three, two, one seconds for intermediate sprints, six, four, two, and one seconds for the stage placing. So depending on how close they are, it's a short time trial. It's more than likely that it could just come down to uh, sprint bonuses in the final crit. Yeah, that's right. Um, definitely interesting going into the final day. Um, Kavanagh, I know, is a quite, like you saw yesterday, he's quite an aggressive rider. Um, just seeing the finish here again. That, to me, almost looks like Michael Vink from the, the Brisbane Continental. The 26-year-old New Zealander. Name wasn't mentioned, but certainly could be. So good performance if that is the case. Can't see his race number here, from here, unfortunately, but it uh, does look as if maybe Michael Vink took out the stage, the New Zealand 26-year-old strong man. We mentioned the Kiwis. They keep coming over into the National Road Series and doing so well. If, uh, if they want to travel to Australia, then we've already have the confidence to know that they're actually going to perform well when they get here and it's the same with the Joe Coopers um, and some so many of the riders that are Brad Evans so many riders have come into the NRS from New Zealand and really performed very well yeah another one stands out to me well he's not actually I don't think he's in New Zealand now Robert Stannard <laughs> he's yeah. gone both ways hasn't he yeah he's gone back yeah. and forth yes yeah yeah well I think uh, we'll have what's the go with contract details is he any rumors of where he may be going he was one of the guys from the Mitchelton Scott under-23 team last year, they had three that turned pro, and he was the one that missed out, but it, I think he'd be in the mix to be the next one to go. Yeah, he's definitely had a good good season this year in Europe. Um, won quite a few races already, um, and only only very young as well, so he's got a big future ahead of him. From back overseas, back home, they were talking about big loop training loops, and uh, I said something on the Facebook feed about no chocolate bananas today for you there at Chillingham Shop. Mate, you boys were uh, serious about making this breakaway stick, weren't you, today? Yeah, uh, we've had a good block in this year, me and Elliot, so we knew it was strong coming back. So just looking at uh, getting the updated um, official results as quick as we can. We don't want to throw in uh, well, any no, speculation mate. as Schultz, to who may have been where or when. Elliot Schultz from the uh, Australian Cycling Academy. Schultz, we saw uh, high speeds and then we heard that the Indonesian rider that was in that little four-person breakaway with you he was pulling turn 12, but then unfortunately broke a chain um, when you got onto Zara Road. So you kept the intensity up towards the last KOM? Yeah, we, we just tried to drive as hard as we could because we knew that they'd be chasing pretty hard and to just be working on the door out. You can just hear in the background Elliot Schultz being interviewed. I think he was second well, across the line for the ACA Academy. So he was in the breakaway group, and it seems as if he was so able well. to hold on to stay in the placings. Down. A four-person breakaway with four individual riders. Not bad for an under-19. Yeah, individual as well, like we saw yesterday's winner was an individual. Um, yeah, young young Queenslander. Mate, you were so close. A great effort today, a gutsy ride. We know you're a little quite too special, so we uh, big things tomorrow, Arvo, down in Murbar. Rest up, boy. Have something to drink, and we'll uh, contact, uh, get to some of the other positions and podium spots. Well well, I can confirm that the stage winner is, was indeed from Brisbane Continental Cycling, but not Michael Vink as we thought. It was Oliver Martin, the 23-year-old Tasmanian. So Oliver Martin takes out stage two here of the Battle Recharge. So Brisbane Continental getting right in the mix now and taking out the stage win with Oliver Martin, 23-year-old Tasmanian. Great performance from him. But uh, Kavanagh and Tuvi still tied for the overall classification. The leader is Kavanagh still. 
And, yeah, what a great performance. So there's another team that we can throw into the mix in terms of we're talking you know, Inform Make and your Oliver's Real Food and your Mobius Bridge Lanes and, of course, Ben Long Swiss Wellness, but Brisbane Continental doing a great job as well coming yeah. away with the stage win. Yeah, that's right. A fresh new team on the on the NRS scene and um, it's good to good to see them have a win. Mm. Oh, absolutely. So uh, well done to uh, Oliver Martin, the 23-year-old from Tasmania, coming away with the stage win, stage two battle recharge. And that leaves everything to be ridden on the final day. Grace Brown leads the women's competition. She has a handy lead. Hard to see Grace Brown being defeated with one more day's racing to come. Two stages, of course, the time trial over nine kilometres and then the criterium. She's riding for the Holden Gusto team, so she's got really strong team support regardless of what happens in the time trial. I predict she probably will actually increase her lead going into that time trial anyway. And in the men, it's Tuvi and Kavanagh that'll have a lot to do in that time trial to make sure that uh, one of those riders goes on for the overall victory. And uh, throughout the day tomorrow for both those stages, make sure you do check out all the social media feeds that are coming through. Um, the National Road Series through Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Of course, check your Facebook notifications to know when we're going live. But we're certainly looking for a big final day of racing and two beautiful stages for both the men and women so far already and with uh, four more races to come. There's still plenty to happen. Yeah, that's right, both in the men's and the women's. I think there should be some, some great racing tomorrow. Certainly will be. So well, well done to uh, Brisbane Continental rider Oliver Martin picking up stage two of the men for the Battle Recharge. This has been Cycling Australia's a National Road Series live streaming. Thanks to you, Robbie, Robbie Hucker, for joining me. I'm Scott McGrory. We're looking forward to seeing you again for the final day of competition tomorrow.